Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're looking at a whole lot of updates that has been going on within the Blender Foundation the entire week. The updates that we're having this week is way more than the updates that we've had in previous week. And today we're going to kick things off by starting with the Blender developers meeting that took place on the 22nd of June 2020. And the first things that was announced was Blender source code was going to or is now being upgraded to C++17. Its features can now be used throughout the code and the minimum you know, required compiler version has now increased. They also talked about certain grants and moved over to talk about module organization. Now for the module organization, all the modules are now reorganized with their landing page concentrating on all the contact information as well as the workboard and the activity feed this is definitely going to help a lot of people so once you dive directly into the model you can understand what's going on and you can easily make contact and also get the relevant information that you need next thing i was talked about was the per model roadmap update now this one has actually been around for a while but it's very interesting to see that it is actually here for everyone to see so the per model you know update has to do with the 2020 roadmap that they have so if you simply take a look at this you can see for every single section of blender what would happen when so you can tell when you should be expecting stuff right now we know that overrides are going to be coming you know in 2.9 and 2.91 probably we're going to have more visibility for usd from 2.91 all the way to 2.2 and actually speaking about usd i have some gist for you guys so just simply stick around and motion blur was actually talked about that is going to be right here in 2.9 and vulcan is also going to be so i love the whole idea of the coloring and on the other hand i also love the whole idea of you know stacking these things in little little you know capsule like stuff so anyone who wants to know what to expect from any release of blender would have a very good idea of what is coming and with that said they now moved over to talking about the new model owners pablo de Barro will be dealing with the sculpt paint and texture which is you know practically his thing and then you know julian would also be dealing with the user interface clement has actually gone ahead to archive the gpu viewport and ev now if you go over to the link which is actually from here you would notice that the gpu viewport is now archived actually it is actually you know archived and replaced with the ev and viewport uh, stuff so if you want to see more stuff about ev and viewport this is where you need to go so right now this is basically how the module pages looks like and it's very very lovely i mean you can tell the time duration and you can see a couple of things that you would want to know we will talk about some of them that are available right now and in case you're wondering about virtual reality we already covered something like that previously so moving on they talked about 2.83 officially 2.83.1 release is now here as the LTS is now available for anyone who wants to use 2.83 for production. Now, within the time of release, there were several stuff that was talked about. First of all, the feature, first of all, 33 bugs has actually been fixed. There is no new feature, so it is safe for anyone who wants to simply upgrade from 2.82 to 2.83, or maybe you're working with the previous build of 2.83 and you just want something very stable, you can now simply proceed to do this. And if you simply go over to this link, which I'm going to put in the description, you would notice that right here, there is a maintenance task and we can simply scroll all the way down and see the ones that are new, the ones that have been fixed, and also the ones that are waiting to be fixed. A new maintenance release is already being worked on right now, so there is actually a plan for this to be released sometime in a couple of weeks, probably by July, we should be seeing something like that. Next thing that was discussed about was the 2.9 from the 24th of June, so the Beacon 2 actually took place, and of course, we've also seen some updates. One of the updates here is the upcoming change to Alembic, and on the other hand, they're still talking about, you know, uh, several bugs and issues that is being faced with 2.90 which they are actually looking at working on now these things are stuff that would happen over time and then we dive into the google summer of code google summer of code is going on i'm gonna pull links we've already talked about this over and over so link is gonna be in the description where you can see this and you can take a look at some of the projects that you're working on now let's talk about the new features and changes these are most of the things that a lot of you guys would like to see first and foremost blender 2.9 now has motion blow for EV. Now, in case you have not noticed this, I'm simply going to show you guys with both Blender 2.83 and also Blender 2.9. 
all right so with blender 2.83 open here what you would notice is i'm actually gonna head to keyframe this tiny cube and we have this oh this nice stuff happening all right by default if you simply go over here and you you know see the ev you notice you have motion blur and once you turn this on and click right here you notice you have sample shutter speed and all that stuff let's actually switch to the camera to see what's happening press n on the keyboard go over to this part called view and within this part i'm simply going to lock the camera press the home key just to zoom right in and then i will go ahead and bring this right to where i want to see it let's play back just to make sure that we can see this looks good all right so by default you know you have your motion blur turned on and once you fire up f12 on your keyboard you should be able to see your render but now you notice we don't have that actually let's simply go ahead and do this and switch this back to image right here render all right so we don't have to switch back and forth so with this here you would notice that you don't you don't see this i mean even if you turn this off and simply fire up the render one more time there is nothing so just for the fact that i would like to clear things out i'm simply going to go ahead and copy this out and fire up blender 2.9 which we have right here let's delete that actually let's delete everything that we have and paste this so right now we are pasting this there is nothing new that we've done we're just simply having exactly the same thing that we have all right so i'm moving this back and forth so you can see that press home just to zoom in the camera and now we have that all right so i don't think we want that keyframe there so i'm just going to clean or delete that frame all right so with this now if i simply go over here where we have our render we have ev and i'm switching this to motion blur let's actually do exactly the same thing that we did from there come right here and switch over to image come right here and switch to render you notice we don't have anything new there if i go ahead and press f12 you would notice that we have render all right so the render now has the motion blur attached to it now it's not totally up to you to change and play with how much you want the motion blur to be like and how you want the steps for the motion blur to be like so depending on what you want to do you can now do that so it's very cool to see that there is now support for motion blur directly in ev once you're working with blender so with this said we're also going to look at some other cool updates that is also now here with blender 2.9 now speaking about you know the motion blur cycles itself now has an update Embraer is now used for retracing on the cpu and this significantly improves the performance with scenes that does have motion blur in them there's also an update to the hair curve there's also a brand new sky texture so we've talked about the sky texture before you know we've talked about it severally made an entire video about it i'm going to put a link in the description where you can check that out and also there is a brand new grease pencil. actually let's just simply play with these tools and see what and what they can do so i'm just simply going to jump right here and just in case anyone wants to see how this works we will simply go over to the shaders switch from here and switch this to all so we looked at this about i think two weeks ago something like that so i'm just going to type the word sky texture so now you would notice we have the nishita so if i simply click and drag this right here and switch these to cycles let's simply do this select that create a very cool plane we always love the plane now don't we and i will switch this to cycle so once we do that you can now notice that we have this new sky here so if you're trying to get like a very realistic sky right now this works and with that said there is also a brand new grease pencil function we covered this few days back so i'm also going to put a link in the description for you guys to see that and if you're wondering what that does if you're working with 2.83 you'll definitely not see this feature so for example if i simply select this object right now and we go over to this part called object and i go down to this part where we have us convert to i can easily convert this to grease pencil so it says grease pencil from curve or mesh and now you have your grease pencil actually this would not save any form of animation you've done it would also not save anything that you've done that has to do with um you know modifiers all of that stuff deformers it wouldn't save that all right so if you want to animate if you have textures on this it's also not going to save that if you want to see a more extensive video about that i'm going to put those links in the description so with that said we are also seeing that there is a pretty cool update to the constraint there is a pretty cool update also to the outliner and there are also a very tiny set of updates to certain things right here for the alembic there is an update to the alembic so if you want to read up for that one there is a link which i'm going to put in the description where you can read this one up so right now 
they are making changes to their lambic just like we talked about earlier because they want to accommodate you know they want to actually change and also accommodate usd right now they're trying to you know remake the whole alembic stuff for the guys modeling there are two main updates the very first update is for the bevel and then the next update is actually there's two updates for the bevel and now there is also an update to the extrude dissolve and insert stuff right now it has been renamed so if i simply go ahead and undo this in previous videos you might have seen that if we actually move this there if we simply press the tab key let's jump right here if we simply press the tab key press three on the keyboard and select this object actually we're doing that on the wrong object all right select this object is no longer known as the extrude insert and dissolve but now it is called the extrude manifold so if i have this i can simply move this around and if i go ahead and insert this i can use this to do stuff like that i can select this and use this to do stuff like this i can also use this to do stuff like that you see very easy so in this way it's pretty easy for you to start making some very cool looking geometry as you know as much as you want so this right now has now been renamed so with this here let's take a look at the new update to the bevel so the bevel itself has two updates the very first one is once i press the tab key tab three select this and control b this out all right so right now you would notice that we have the offset and now we also have the absolute all right so there is a little you know change within the parameters that deals with these two but for the most part they seem to look alike but there are changes to this and you know that's the main reason why i'm going to put link in the description for you guys to take a look at that there is also another update now this update deals with the profile so if i simply click on the profile right now before now we talked about this profile having you know uh stuff that you can easily come through and make changes to so if i simply make this segment about you know let's say three i can pick these handles and make changes right now you can select this and invoke a bezier handle so with the bezier handle you can simply start making changes like this i can also select this right now and also invoke the bezier handle and we can start making changes so these are ways that you can tweak this and also get some cool results if these are the things that you're going for right now this doesn't look like much let's simply go in and add some extra segments so that you guys can see that so if you would like to tweak you know tweak your bevel have some handles that you would like to play with of course you can also simply start creating awesome looking stuff by just beveling and playing with the handles so for those who are interested in making models and making some cool looking stuff this one is for you as you would find this one extremely useful so some more updates that you also need to know about is the transform so there is now a vertex slide transform that actually works with snapping now they also have a snap to insert between constraint and for the python api there's an update to that as well and also the animation player now supports djv2 files but these are not the only updates that is available for blender so if you simply jump right here into blender we found a couple of them we made a couple of videos about them and it's just cool to actually talk about them here so if you go through and make a thingy like this i'm just simply going to smooth shade this jump right here and proceed to apply we already talked about this one whereby once you go to the sculpting room and change this from here to vertex. you can now start painting vertex color so we already talked about the paint we talked about the smear we also talked about the color filter so from here is where you can make your decision of what color you want to play with and you can start painting in that color and if you want to smear that color you can also proceed to do that if you want to change the color simply go back here click right here make a change to that color and proceed to start painting now once you're done with this and you want to make changes to you know the filter you can simply click and right now once you click and drag there is no update so all you need to do is just wiggle with your middle mouse button to make changes and this is one of the cool updates that we found now the next update which we also found is right now if you simply click from here or if you simply go over to the edit and go right here to preference you would notice let's simply bring this right here you would notice that right now there is now a new experimental tab right here now you may not be able to find this experimental tab unless you turn on the developers extra and once you turn this on there's a new particle system that might be arriving in blender 2.9 there's also a new hair system and also a debugging system now if you want to play with this which is actually not completely implemented yet but once it is implemented how you can play with it is by simply coming over to the simulator editor right here and you'll be able to play with it right now there is nothing available for you to play with so this is just you know 
something to keep in mind once you start hearing that there's an update to that. So with this said, we are also going to take a look at something else that we also found on the internet. So Ellie has actually posted something that has to do with an open mesh effect or, or effect for Blender. And this looks more like um, it's actually a build on its own. So it's not native in Blender right now. So this is more like uh, a different approach to Houdini engine for Blender. Actually, I would have really loved to see Houdini engine come over to Blender as this would make a lot of sense. But with the clip which you're taking a look at right now, you can see that you can easily build your OTL file directly in Houdini or your HDA file, which is your Houdini digital asset. And when you bring this over to Blender, there is a modifier that you can use to trigger things up. Now, if you apply this to a mesh, you can load your OTL file or your HDA files and you can start making those changes directly in Houdini. Now, this supports for any other modifier that you're going to throw onto the mesh. And also you can proceed to start tweaking the model. You know, if you want to tweak it within the edit mode, you can simply do all of that. And this makes sense. I cannot wait to see Houdini for Blender and, you know, see the Houdini engine ship over to Blender. Now with this said, there's also a pretty cool update as well. So from the guys at Tangent Lab, we've already talked about the whole USD rewriting, the whole thing they wanted to do for this before. It's very interesting to see that Ben Skinner, one of the guys that works with the Tangent Animation Lab, they've actually come up with something. Now, I don't know if this is for sure a Hydra Delegate for Cycles, but it looks good. It is more like uh, something they've been building along the line with AMD because if you actually follow the channel for a while now, you would notice that we did talk about AMD implementing some Hydra Delegate and I guess that is actually what we're seeing right now. The exact same project file that we're having from uh, Houdini USD viewport is also something that we're having directly in Blender. And on the Twitter thread here, there is a lot of conversation about certain things that this supports right now. And one of them consists of the support for curves and also the support for Blender principle shading directly in, you know, Houdini. So hopefully this might make a lot of sense. So if there is some way that we can have this integration from Houdini to Blender or Blender to Houdini, this is definitely going to be perfect. And right now, I don't really care if it's for the USD or if it's for, you know, the Houdini engine. I just want us to have some good handshake between Houdini and Blender. Now, speaking of which, we've already talked about some procedural tool, which you can use to do procedural modeling directly in Blender. I'm going to put a link in the description for you to see that. And before we go, let's also talk about one more cool update that we spotted out that had to do with cycles. And this exists for Blender 2.9. All right. So with Blender 2.9 open, you can see we have this scene, which we uh, actually set up right here. There is an update to cycles that you can now notice. Actually, you don't really see anything here, but if you go right here and click down to this part where you have the denoising, there is a new render denoising thingy that you can now work with. Now, if you simply turn this on, Previously, you don't see any of this. All you get to see is optics, but now you can either choose between NLM or you can choose optics. So if you're trying to render your stuff and this particularly supports uh, motion blur and from the documentation, this is said to actually give you a better sample while you're trying to render. So it's totally dependent on what you want to do. If you want to render this stuff really clean, you want to render things really fast and you know they have, you know, um, motion blur of course you can proceed to getting them and at the same time if you're wondering where we got this pretty cool cars from these cars are from a plugin known as traffic so i'm going to put a link in the description where you can also get this so just in case you're trying to get this as well you can definitely find this one pretty useful and proceed to working with it and of course this week has had a whole lot of updates from tools that we've seen and also a couple more tools that are in development that we're definitely going to be covering by next week so in case you want to see them simply stick around the channel as we're still going to cover some more tools and do a couple of walkthrough on how you can get things up and running and that's definitely about it all of these updates look impressive and it's very cool to see that the guys from blender foundation are continually developing and several other third parties are also creating some pretty cool tools that would definitely make our life even way more easier i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend 
And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.